okay students so we have seen previous class we have discussed about calculus of variation right and we have seen the definitions we have solved the problems and today we are going to start with the next that is find the curve passing through the point x1 y1 and x2 y2 which when rotated about the x axis gives a minimum surface area yes students have given the hint also last class but um just see how we will simplify this example so you are going to remember the definition of functional which this is also nothing but is a minimum means mean this is a minimum length any curve let them you we will be taking this directly okay so the curve may be in, ge in general we will be taking in this form okay then we have eulers equation and here also we will be taking again this curve is minimum therefore this is you have to remember perfectly and by this condition you should remember the eulers equation dou f upon dou y minus d upon dx dou f upon dou y dash is equal to zero so and let them give any integration you can you can consider this as i remember here in this calculus of variation there are three very important variables we can say that is x and y are already there differentiation of y will be y dash this one is extra for this function okay then we have seen the derivation of the eulers equation and we have seen these are the solutions you have to remember so i will be telling when to use this solutions so please remember this f is independent of x f is independent of y f is independent of y dash yes and f is independent of x and y so we have solved study problems right okay so same way we will be solving yes run so write it down i am telling you to write it down in the class itself it will be very slow so that again you not required again once again to write the notes okay in the time of examination it will be quite helpful you to write it down the in the class itself and be reading okay so run so let them give any question here just change thing in fine here we go okay so run so we'll just take here solution one by one you can just see how to frame the first function this is very very important in calculus of variation let them give any question you have to come to that function first then simplification will go on easy so this is first we are going to take the x axis and y axis okay this is x axis and this is y axis we'll take here origin o so what it says find the curve passing through the point x y and y x1 y1 x2 y2 which when rotated about the x axis so there is a curve here right and which is rotated so we'll take this curve okay this is a curve now some curve i will take this so i will rotate this about the x axis so i will take this point as nothing but x1 y1 and this point i will take here x2 y2 so please remember from this center i told what is the circumference of this you have to remember that is 2 pi r so 2 pi is fixed this is constant only r is now function here therefore r we are going to take here variable as function so this will be 2 pi f and how this f is function here so we will be taking the function as the distance whatever it is going to cover here so therefore we will take some surface distance or surface area it is going to cover as yes so minimum surface i will take yes and change of this will become the rate of change of surface area will become ds so when you are changing this area students please remember here 
only you can see y will be yes y will be here y will be negative and y will be positive so therefore y is also one of the variable which is changing this area and because this is rotating therefore we take this is as 2 pi so 2 pi y ds we take right and here the function what you are going to take here is it is 2 pi f so again please remember here this is now going to give you the the function f dx so please remember what will be the f now so as i told you you remember the functional formula right so i just missed this y hmm. so functional formula you can write so therefore this is 2 pi y functional formula is 1 minus 1 plus y dash square so this is how by using the graph you can easily get the what is our function okay student so this is our integral value now okay so what i say therefore therefore surface area i is given by again from integration means if you take this from x1 to x2 all the strips you are going to take and then you are going to add this all the strips whenever you add that is integration from x1 to x2 right so, so you can just see this is along x-axis therefore y will be the our whatever y will become our radius so therefore i will write like this that is circumference for this is 2 pi y and the change in the surface area that is ds for our integration right now i will simplify this now therefore i will take like this i is equal to integration x1 x2 now please see here in the previous example also we have taken this yes is nothing but the we are going to take here change in the surface area will become okay we will take ds upon dx with respect to x this is some curve i'm going to take so whenever there is a curve please remember the length of that curve length of that curve is given 1 plus y dash square or we just take ds is equal to square root of 1 plus y dash square dx run so please remember this so therefore i will just substitute this so this is 2 pi y square root of 1 plus y dash square dx so now you can simplify yes runs any doubt see this is all you have to think otherwise you have to keep in the mind that whenever you get the uh, surface area which is rotating along the x-axis you can remember this value that is integration is given by i is equal to integration x1 to x2 2 pi y square root of 1 plus y dash square dx or you have to assume all these values and then you are going to write so which is better you just think okay both the i have told you what you have to remember whenever they give the minimum surface area which is rotating about x axis okay so this is given by integration i is equal to square root of x1 to x2 2 pi y square root of 1 plus y dash square dx okay so now, so now you can simplify this so therefore this is i is equal to integration i will take a constant outside 2 pi okay only i'm going to integrate from x1 to x2 y square root 1 plus y dash square dx so this will be now our function of x y y dash okay so, so when you take this as the function f of x y y dash what is missing here yes so you can use now euler's equation 
by Euler's equation. Yes, you can see, look at the question here, students. You can easily find this, whatever the function we have taken here, this will be now f. f is equal to y square root 1 plus y dash square is independent of independent of x okay so when it is independent of x students use the condition in the previous class i have given the condition so therefore it means that i will take that condition weight yes so this is the condition i'm going to take here Excellent. So when f is independent of x, you can see do f upon do x is equal to zero, and Euler's equation to above becomes d upon dx f minus y dash do f upon do y dash is equal to zero. So integration you are going to get this is your constant, and by direct solution you will get the answer. Okay, so we will just simplify this now. Yes, I will take this f minus f y dash do f upon do y is equal to some constant. So I will take some c now. Then I will put here f is equal to y square root 1 plus y dash square. Is it clear? So we are going to find the curve pass passing through this x1, y1 and x2, y2 points. Runs. Okay. So here we'll just simplify this now. You will get the answer. Yes, runs. please try. Yes, so f I will just substitute. So that implies y square root of 1 plus y dash square minus y dash as it is, no change. Do upon do y dash is also same. Yes, runs only simplification is there, you can do it. Just substitute f value y square root 1 plus y dash square is equal to some constant they have given that i will take this as some c yes runs integration means first you go for separable variable means all you are going to bring x on one side and y on another side so before that you will be simplifying this differentiation that is differentiation partially y dash with respect to y dash okay so so we can just differentiate this so i will differentiate this so y square root of 1 plus y dash square as it is minus this is y dash is outside here you can see y is again we are going to hold y as constant because this is partial differentiation students please remember with respect to y dash so i am going to take out y outside okay so what will be the in the bracket students please remember the formula here do upon do, do x square root of x yes students please anyone tell me what is the value for this differentiation yes kaustab please tell me yes anyone one upon two root x yes one upon two root x is the correct beta now suppose this is not with respect to x if it is other value so please remember one upon two root u into du by dx this formula we are going to use so here same way again 
differentiating with respect to y dash i will show you so this is square root of 1 plus y dash square right now i will be writing like this so i'll just take down yes here i will write so this is 1 upon 2 square root of 1 plus y dash square into you're going to differentiate this I'm going to differentiate this mm, 1 plus y dash square friends okay divided by this is dx okay now you can just simplify this mm -hmm. only inner value sorry only du by dx you are going to take That is, you are going to differentiate only u. What is u? 1 plus y dash square. You are going to differentiate this one. Okay, don't get confused. Okay, so once you can just simplify this quickly. So therefore, this is equal to, I will take 1 upon 2 square root 1 plus y dash square as it is into differentiation of 1 is 0 plus differentiation of y dash square will become 2 y dash. So further, if you simplify, so 2, 2 will get cancelled. You will get here y dash upon square root of 1 plus y dash square. Students, any doubt in this, students, please tell me. Yes, yeah, simple differentiation this is. Now you can substitute the values here. That is y dash divided by square root of 1 plus y dash square is equal to c. No change in the c. Only this value I have differentiated, run. So differentiation you should be perfect now. Okay, now you bring y terms on the right left hand side and remaining all the terms in the y terms. Why is there that I don't want in the left hand side? I will bring it on right hand side, run. Please do it. Yes. So first I will take the LCM so that this will be quite easy. So two root of one plus y. Dash the square. 2 square root of 1 plus y dash square. Yes, where beta? Where? You have doubt? No, sir. No, sir. It's correct. Ah, okay. Same I have written in y dash divided by square root of 1 plus y dash square. Yes. Differentiation of this, why I have taken outside, why is here? Differentiation of square root 1 plus y dash square this is, okay. Okay, fine. So now we'll take the LCM here. LCM will become square root of 1 plus y dash square, right? So then you will simplify this. Mm, I will multiply here square root of 1 plus y dash square and I will multiply here 1 because your denominator nothing is there means I have to cross multiply here so this will be y uh, square root of 1 plus y dash square square because two times I am multiplying therefore this is square minus y this is y dash into y dash will become y dash square which is equal to See, so just simplification is there, so you can do it very easily, do it fast a little bit. Okay, so therefore, I will just take this square and root will get cancelled. Y I will take inside, so this is y plus y, y dash square minus y into y dash square divided by square root of 1 plus y dash square is equal to c. So you can see this y into y dash square plus and minus will get cancelled. So we remain only y here. So therefore, this is y divided by square root of 1 plus y dash square is equal to c. Is it clear? Okay, now you can just simplify this again. I don't want the square root and square I have to remove, I have to bring y on this side. So all these things you are going to do here, students. So one by one we will do it. Okay, first what I will do? 
I will bring this square root of 1 plus y dash square on right hand side. So this will be y is equal to c square root of 1 plus y dash square. I don't want this square. So I will square root I don't want. So I will square both the sides. Okay. So therefore, this will be y square, c square. Square root and root will get cancelled. So this is 1 plus y dash square. Yes, student. So now again, you can simplify this. So therefore, this is equal to, I will take this c square inside. So this is c square plus c square y dash the whole square. So I wanted to find y dash, right? I want to find y dash. So I will bring c square on this side. Okay. And I will keep this as it is. So I will write this first. c square y dash square is equal to c square. If I bring it on this side, this will become y square minus c square. Okay, students. So now I want only y dash. So again, I will bring c square on this side. So y dash square is equal to y square minus c square divided by c square. So you can just simplify, go on simplifying like this. Okay, then you take the square here. So when you take here square, so you will get square root you can take now. Or bring the square on the right hand side. So it will be square root we will be taking. So therefore, y dash is equal to square root of y square minus c square divided by c square. So now you can see I have brought all y dash term on the left hand side and y remaining all terms will be in the right hand side. Now I can integrate the students. Okay, so please integrate now. You will just see what you will get here. So integration will be integration of y dash, right? Then this is integration of here again, take again c square and square will go. So therefore, this is y square minus c square divided by c. Okay. Mm. dy by dx. I would have taken this as dy by dx. Okay, I will write y dash as dy by dx. dy by dx. So again, you can simplify why I will bring it on right hand side only everything that will be more better. So therefore, integration dy divided by square root of y square minus c square is equal to this will be now dy is there this is equal to integration one by c dx. So what I have done I have just taken here y on the left hand side so that dy upon square root of y square minus c square I will get here which is equal to dx I have brought it on the right hand side. So therefore integration one upon c is remaining dx. Now you can just simplify. Yes, friends, anyone knows the formula of the integration constant will be definitely it will be x. Okay, so anyone knows the formula? What will be the integration of one divided by square root of y square minus c square? Okay, I will give you the formula friends. that is integration one divided by square root of x square minus a square dx. This will be equal sin, to sin inverse of uh, sine you can take or hyperbolic cos you can take here. Hyperbolic cos inverse x by a. So this formula I will use. Okay, students, so now I can just simplify this formula. Yes, and and this is c is constant so integration of 1 dx will be x so these two formulas i will write here so therefore that implies this is cos hyperbolic here x is y so i will take y and a is here c so therefore this is y upon c 
which is equal to integration of 1 upon c is constant integration of 1 is x plus c dash i will take because c is already given therefore i will take here c dash now we can simplify bring solve for y student so therefore yes therefore y upon c is equal to this is hyperbolic cos inverse i will take the lcm for this i will multiply here c and i will multiply here one because this is divided by one cross multiply so therefore this is x plus c dash c divided by this is c students now you can just simply further simplify oh -ho. inverse i have already taken here so therefore i will write like this y is equal to this is c cos hyperbolic x plus so for constant i'm going to take c dash c is equal to some constant i will take a which is divided by c students you can see this is nothing but this is a catenary the curve we are going to get y is equal to c into cos hyperbolic x plus a divided by c which is a catenary student so like this all derivation type of examples are there but you can see very simple examples are there and very few examples are there only by practice you will get the answer students not much to simplify more things only thing proper integration you have to bring integral sign so that by direct integration you should get the answer yes student you were talking about the sign you can take sign but i will not get the catenary this is what i wanted which is a catenary i wanted therefore if i take this sign it will not be the this equation we will not get So they are all derivation type of examples. Okay, so we will take the next example. Example two, please write it down students so that you will have the notes with you. Okay, next example you can write down, find the path on which Particle in the absence of friction will slide from one point to another. Very interesting example, the students. This is. So they have given again other, yes, this is other, okay. Then in the shortest time, yes, students, you can just see very interesting example and very important. This is we also take this as the derivation. Under the action of gravity. Very simple problem. This is this problem is also known as yes, it is B R A C H I S T O C H R O N E. I will pronounce this runs. Yes, any idea how you will pronounce this word? So such a long word. Yes, anyone please try. This is B R A C H I S P O C H R O N E. Will you pronounce this runs? Okay. This is very, very important and uh, 
it is quite interesting that find the path on which a particle in the absence of friction will slide from one point to another in the shortest time under the action of gravity yes and we'll just see now what all things you have to sum up in this graph i will tell you see so how to remember this okay what happened to this okay how we are going to simplify this friends see here so i will take the solution here so what it is saying what i have to find i have to find the path right on which the particle is the absence of friction will slide so i want to find the path therefore i have to come across here it slides from the particle is sliding from one point to another friends in the shortest time under the action of gravity so means i will draw it like this so therefore i will take this again x axis i'll take here origin o and i will take here y so what is saying the point is now i will take from here somewhere here i will draw i will take the path here from one point to another so i will just take one curve here so that it is sliding yes i got it correctly okay so now this particle is going to slide from one point to another in the shortest time so what all things are required yes i will take the particle here some particle i will take here p which is having coordinates x and y okay so when this is sliding it has some distance i am going to take here yes okay so this is from particle p so it is going to go to the particle next point the other point i will take here somewhere here i will take i will take this as p1 x1 y1 i will take the coordinates so one point to another I have taken here okay so in the what is the friction is not there and the particle is going to move from p2 p1 so therefore this distance from 0 to p was yes again there is a change in the distance so please remember can anybody tell me what will be the change of this distance is nothing but the curve or dx is the change of rate of change of this distance we say which is also known as what students rate of change of distance or rate of change of speed we say any idea yes rate of change of speed is what students speed divided by time taken any idea what is speed divided by time taken yes students please think yes prajwal kunal omkar is there what is speed divided by time taken or rate of change of speed or displacement what we say speed will be nothing but the distance covered okay <laughs> any idea students yes mahadev is there omkar is there yes manish is there mazin beta please tell me you have studied already okay i will tell you ds upon dx means rate of change of the speed or distance displacement upon whatever the time has taken to travel this distance is nothing but the velocity please remember this okay okay so this all things you should remember next uh, this whatever the distance it has covered or rate of change of this distance is some curve so what is the formula i'm going to take for this some curve i have taken this okay so can anybody tell me what will be the formula you have to remember Yes, Kunal. Yes, students, please think. What is the curve? Yes, Pratik. 
कार्तिक इज देयर वन प्लस वाई स्क्वायर हाँ सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर दैट द कर्व विल बी स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ वन प्लस वाई डैश स्क्वायर सो दिस इज ऑल यू आर गोइंग टू गेट ऑल द इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द ग्राफ सो नाउ यू विल राइट नाउ सो हियर अगेन कैन एनी बडी टेल मी एट पॉइंट ओ सपोज सो वॉट विल बी द एनर्जी हियर एट पॉइंट ओ कैन एनी बडी टेल मी वॉट विल बी द एनर्जी zero obviously your answer is right so here at point o the energy is zero this energy wherever it is at at one point we take this as some kinetic energy okay so when this is now traveling automatically it is traveling no potential energy means we are not going to make it to travel from point o to this p dash so it will run automatically so what will be the kinetic energy formula anyone knows what is the kinetic energy formula here half mv square yes very good therefore kinetic energy at point p1 i will take this as half m v square is the correct answer very good so this is at this point and from p to p dash the kinetic energy will be half m v square so all this values we are going to find the assurance okay so i will start simplifying this see ha huh? okay all you have to write all this decorations here <laughs> okay so i will take let let the particle now you can write down particle start sliding okay on the curve is it clear op op i will take some curve hmm from oh this is how you have to construct now then with zero velocity is it clear so at time t seconds what you get op distance is covered suppose i will take here yes as yes, a distance covered and and rate of change of this distance is given by square root of 1 plus y dash square okay so let it be at any time students you can see there is a change in the distance covered by the particle which is given by the curve curve formula we know already that is the length which is nothing but square root of 1 plus y dash square so this is all there then we will use very simple principle principle of work and energy we take the simple principle that is work and energy now how we will find the work done students any idea what will be the work done in so we'll write full sentence work done in moving the particle moving the particle from o to p so this is what we have the work done so this is equal to whatever the kinetic energy we have kinetic energy at point p right at point p minus kinetic energy at point o so therefore this is nothing but the work done so please remember this now formula okay so what is the kinetic energy at point p so we are going to take the kinetic energy we'll take here okay are okay. why this line is drawing automatically i don't know okay so this is equal to i will write by kinetic energy 1 upon 2 m v square right minus your kinetic energy at point o is zero so this is o and this is zero okay don't get confused this letter is number zero ha huh? this is alphabet zero even i get confused sometimes okay don't worry so here v square v square is nothing but yes here v is nothing but our rate of change of 
displacement or the distance covered. So I will take here V is equal to ds upon dx. But here this is for x axis. Please remember when it is at certain time, this we are going to take this as V is equal to ds upon dt with respect to time. Okay, so I will just substitute the value here. So therefore, this is equal to 1 upon 2 yum ds upon dt square. Okay. Also, you should remember whatever the work done in moving the particle from 0 to p, we are going to take that is mass into gravity and this is with respect to y axis so therefore this will be m g h so h is nothing but actually work done m g h mass gravity and the whatever the work done that is distance or height we used to take here we are going to take y okay m is mass g is gravity so what we are going to find we are going to find the path is it clear so we'll just simplify this now so therefore this is m g y so m will get cancelled right hand side and left hand side and uh, yes i will bring this i want to find whatever the path we are going to have that i wanted to find so ds upon dt square i will take ds upon dt square is equal to this is 2 g y or i'll just simplify this ds upon dt i will just take the square root here square root of 2 g y student so now we can see this is now i want to find the path so how much path depends on how much friends it depends on the time taken by the part to move right so therefore i'll just simplify this dt i will bring it on this side so this is ds upon square root of 2 g y is equal to dt so therefore thus yes students you can just see thus the time taken by the particle particle to move from O to P is so therefore I will take here this is T so time from beginning it will be 0 and certain time this will be DT so I will just substitute the value here DT value I will substitute which is equal to this is again now with respect to this will be time now this is going to convert with respect to distance so therefore this will be from 0 to x1 distance okay so i'll just substitute here ds upon square root 2 g y so now we can simplify this very easily but see here ds is nothing but the we have taken here in the formula we have taken here ds upon dx is equal to square root 1 plus y dash square which is nothing but some curve is it clear so therefore i will take ds is equal to square root of 1 plus y dash square dx so we are converting this into mathematical form which is the curve we are going to get here so therefore this is equal to integration 0 to x1 so ds is again we are going to take 1 plus y dash square which is some curve rate of change of curve what we say so therefore this will be 1 plus y dash square divided by square root of 2 g y d x run so now we can just simplify this and get our function first that is very very important so here you can see 2 g is constant i will take it outside so this is equal to I will try it here 1 upon square root 2g I will take outside then integration from 0 to x1 square root of 1 plus 
y dash square divided by square root of y is remaining. So therefore, friends, we have here our function f is equal to square root of 1 plus y dash square divided by y. So I have taken square root for both the things, which is, you can see it is independent of, independent of x. So which is independent of x means what, friends? Yes, we are going to take the Euler's equation independent of x here. Okay, so I will take down that x here. So here we have f is independent of x. So now remaining things are simplification within two, three minutes. You can do it very easily. Just substitute f this value wherever f is there. Go on substituting the values. Right? So you can see this is equation. Euler's equation is reduced to this equation. Right now integrating this you will get back the this value so i will just substitute f in this i don't know why this pen is writing everywhere simply okay. so i'll just take here okay now we'll just substitute f value in this runs so this will be square root of one plus y dash square divided by y this is under square root minus y dash Again, do upon do y dash. Yes, friends, we are using the Euler's equation here to simplify. Here I will take square root of 1 plus y dash square divided by y is equal to some constant c. Yes, friends, please simplify this now equation. Okay, so I will just simplify this. So already we have done this do upon do y dash y is again constant. I will remove it outside. So I will write like this so that will not get confused here. Okay. So I will write like this square root of 1 plus y dash square divided by square root of y minus y dash upon square root of y do upon do y dash because you can see remaining terms we are going to hold constant only the y dash in the partial differentiation will become our variable therefore differentiation we have already done in the last example only we have done here so i will write that directly here one plus y dash square divided by square root of y minus y dash divided by square root of y differentiation we have already done this is y dash divided by square root of one plus y dash square is equal to See, as I already told you, simplify this, bring y or y dash on one side, y on one side, remaining all the terms on one side. Okay, so here you're going to go for separable variable. So before that, I will take here LCM first because this is one value is there. This is another value. I will take LCM. So this is our LCM runs square root y square root one plus y dash square so here cross multiply i will multiply here square root of one plus y dash square here in the denominator square root of y is there only i will multiply one then so here this is square root of one plus y dash square the whole square minus here y dash and y dash is there so here only y dash square you will get which is equal to c so just say same steps are there c if you just simplify, this will be again denominator square root of y, square root of 1 plus y dash square. So square and root will get cancelled. You can see this is 1 plus y dash square minus y dash square. So this y dash y dash square will get cancelled, which is equal to c. Strand. So now you can see this is 1 divided by we will get. So for our simplification, what I will do? I will bring this on this side and c on this side so this will be like one upon c which is equal to square root of y square root of one plus y dash square so now what you are going to do as i told you i want to remove out y dash outside because differentiation is there in y dash so that integration and differentiation will be reverse and you will get you can cancel the integration and differentiation so i will square this on both these sides so instead of taking one upon C constant, I will take some value it as A for this. Okay. So one upon C, I will consider some 
constant e and then i will square this so i'll bring this on right left hand side always so this is square root of y square and the square root 1 plus y dash square i'm making all the terms square which is equal to a square student so what i have done i've just taken the square on both the sides and constant for our simplification one upon c i've just substituted this value okay students so further same way square root and root will get cancelled yeah square root and root will get cancelled and here yeah, this is square so this is y 1 plus y dash square is equal to a square you can just simplify this runs so i'll multiply this y inside this bracket this is y plus y y dash square i want y dash on one side so, so the differentiation and integration are reverse and you can cancel it so this y i will bring it on right hand side so this equation will be y y dash square is equal to a square i will bring this y on this side so this is minus y you will get next again i don't want this y in this left hand side so what i will do i will take here y dash square is equal to a square minus y divided by y so again i don't want this square so i will go for square root so we'll take here square root students both the sides so square and root will get cancelled only y dash will remain which is equal to square root of a square minus y divided by y so there like this you have to remove y dash as you know students y dash is nothing but yes y dash is nothing but dy by dx so i'll just write that dy by dx here dy by dx is equal to you will get the by using the separable variable again we have to simplify this runs please remember this is again a square minus y divided by y by using separable variable we are going to bring all y on left hand side and all x on right hand side so all these terms i will bring it on this side so this equation you are going to get here by i will take this equation this side so this will be numerator will become denominator and denominator will become numerator is it clear so therefore this term i will get this is equal to dx okay students so now i can integrate this okay so integration of this is from 0 to y square root of y divided by here Mm. okay so we'll take the integration here minus y dy is equal to integration from 0 to x this is dx now please integrate this runs easily you can see integration i will take this first integration 0 to x dx I will take this on this side integration x is equal to integration 0 to y because this must be we cannot solve this directly so therefore therefore I will substitute the values here I am going to put y is equal to a sine square theta please remember y is equal to sine square theta i am going to take here students so just differentiate this with respect to theta so therefore this is going to become y upon d theta dy upon d theta is equal to a into this is 2 sine theta into cos theta for simplification students i am going to put all this value in this and and i will take this a square as a constant here a i will take for our simplification otherwise we will not get this integral here here only i would have taken here okay so instead of a i will take here square root so that it will become good simplification so square root of a square will become a so just constant i have taken here square root a not much change okay so only a will be remaining here not a square 
so that I get the value as cyclode. So yes, here. Okay, so run just simplification is remaining. Just substitute the values here. Therefore, x is equal to this is integration again integration will change as we are taking with respect to theta so 0 to x integration square root a sine square theta divided by this is a minus a sine square theta into dy dy is now going to become this is 2a sin theta cos theta into d theta now just simplification is there students only substitute the values and simplify yes you will get the value as square root and root will get cancelled here so therefore you will get here you can take out a common from the numerator and denominator you will get a get cancelled so therefore i'll just simplify this is equal to integration zero to theta square root of sine square theta divided by 1 minus sine square theta here friends into as it is no change 2a sine theta into cos theta d theta then i'll substitute here 1 minus x square here friends. so this is equal to integration 0 to infinity square root of sine square theta divided by this is going to become cos square theta this term as it is 2a sin theta into cos theta d theta now here square root and square will get cancelled here square root and square will get cancelled this is equal to integration 0 to theta sin theta divided by cos theta into 2a sin theta cos theta into d theta to substitute this value students you can we wanted to find cycloid therefore i am going to put this value so here cos and cos theta will get cancelled right now you can see this is sine theta into sine theta will be sine square theta okay so therefore again this is integral zero to theta okay and this is 2a sine square theta d theta so please remember sine square theta here students I'm going to substitute the trigonometric formula that is sine square theta is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2. So I'm just substituting this value. This is equal to integration from 0 to theta 2a 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2 d theta. 2 and 2 will get cancelled and i will take a outside which is a constant a i will take outside now i will take integration for one and integration of cos to theta that is our answer student. so integration zero to theta one d theta minus a is outside okay so integration zero to theta cos two theta d theta okay so now you will simplify this now you will get the answer which is equal to a here only one is there so therefore integration of one is theta minus integration of cos two theta students it is sine two theta divided by two in the integral sign zero to theta so first i will substitute here theta and next i will substitute zero so when i substitute the integral sign students you can just see theta when i substitute this is theta minus sine two theta divided by two and minus this is zero so when i substitute here zero theta is zero sine zero is also zero student so therefore you will get the value here so i will take here lcm okay so lcm i will take here two into two i will multiply here into one cross multiply this is divided by one so i will take out two or so this is a upon 2 2 theta minus sine 2 theta students is it clear so now this is our x so therefore 
x is equal to i will take this is b and this function i will take this as phi minus sin phi so which is our cycloid run so please remember this so now here i have put the value a upon b and 2 theta is equal to phi value i have substituted it here so x is equal to b phi minus sin phi which is which is a cycloid run so please remember this how to simplify and get the answer so this type of problem is very very important and this is also known as bratz stork chrome problem so the, which is for shortest time which is nothing but shortest time problem this is so please practice this students i know it is lengthy yes but uh, it is very very important any doubt is there you can ask me friends this is a